Hey everyone, so one of you I'll call O asked me about my step one and step two CK experience. Here's a quick overview of some of the mistakes I made so you won't have to make them. So if you're not aware, the USMLE step exams are the eight to nine hour computerized licensing or board exams that cover foundational sciences as well as clinical knowledge in medical school. These are exams that you use to get into a U.S. medical specialty or residency program and they're often required to graduate from medical school if you are a U.S. medical graduate. The amount of time you take to study for each exam varies. Historically, people have taken a dedicated several weeks for step one and a few weeks for step two, studying for most of the day each week for each of those weeks. So my first big mistake and the first tip I have for you is to set an exam date and stick to it. Sure, you can postpone it if you really need to, but ideally you set a date and have that fixed. One of my big issues with both step one and step two was that I kept pushing the date back and this made me less focused in de during the dedicated since I didn't take the exam date as seriously. But with a dedicated period that's too long, you start forgetting the information that you learned in the beginning of your study block. Ironically, it can get easier to be burned out if you do have a long period as well. However, there's a fine balance between too long versus too short of a dedicated study period. I like studying a little bit less each day, so I like a little bit longer in every exam period, but some people can study like 14 hours a day for a few weeks and do well. Have a definitive goal that's a bit of a reach, that's big, that challenges you, but it's not unrealistic where you're trying to be like 100th percentile, which is realistic for some people, I guess. Even if you're not trying to get into something super competitive, you may end up deciding later on in during your rotations or later on in the year that you want to go into something competitive or you want to go into a program that's competitive even if it's not a competitive specialty, and you don't want your step score to be limiting you from those options. The third big tip is to make a schedule and stick to it. There are some schedules that you can use online on SDN or Reddit or other places, but it's probably better to make your own based on your resources, the amount of time you have, and your weaknesses. Some students go overboard with planning every minute of every day, but this doesn't really work well either since you need to have allowances for th bad days that come up or things like that. However, if you set a goal of like 80 questions a day, make sure you hit those 80 no matter what. Also make sure to schedule and take time out of each day and each week for things like exercise, having fun, half days off. Remember that the whole process is a marathon and not a sprint. I know some people also take assessment days for like NBME exams or UWorld exams and try to factor that into your scheduling as well. So the next big topic is content strategies. So you need to find resources and set techniques that work for you and not just for everyone. UFAP or UWorld First Aid Pathoma is pretty much the go-to for two passes for studying for step one. However, I find that grinding through first aid personally not to be the most effective for me and is pretty low yield since I tended to get pretty distracted and bored really easily. Personally, I recommend focusing more on active learning. Passive reading generally isn't the best way to learn and can be often be a waste of time for many people, so reading first aid front to back wasn't the most effective for me, and I just moved on to more active techniques pretty quickly. Active learning techniques like Anki, which most people do nowadays, are very conducive to learning and long-term memory retention, and I feel like they're a lot more fun, so when you're putting in many hours and you have that study fatigue, mixing up your study techniques with active learning like flashcards or questions can really help, along with doing things like put, minimizing distractions, like putting away your phone, changing your studying environment if you're getting really bored in that studying environment, or things like that. So most of your step one and step two prep is going to be UWorld practice question based, and I would really approach UWorld as more of a learning tool rather than a way to assess your knowledge. And I personally prefer tutorial mode and not time blocks because then I don't feel rushed. And I also like to choose a mix of questions because I feel like it's a better way to interlace knowledge and uh, also not be bored. Again, the real exam is going to be mixed as well, so it helps even with that. For this, I'd recommend going through all the explanations. Don't be lazy if you don't know things that are missing. Make sure you know not just why the answer is right, but also why all the other answers are wrong. And that way you learn from the questions since they can't test every single topic and every single question. And oftentimes, each question has a lot of information embedded even within the wrong answers. Next, make sure you hit the high yield topics, but don't worry too much if you can't memorize everything about one specific subject. If it's a really specific subject, like um, the genetic mutations of one particular disease that you can't get right, don't worry because the likelihood of having that one question or topic on your exam is going to be pretty low, and worrying too much isn't bad for your memory anyways, right? So don't stress too much if there's like one or two topics that aren't your strongest point, try to move on and cover more ground. The next tip is for those of you who are studying for your STEP exam, and the STEP exam is way in the future, or you started studying really early. And this is to study for STEP throughout the year early on. And you can do this by really making sure you take advantage of each of your study blocks during the year, 
and doing the best that you can. So don't just try to pass your, let's say your clinical rotation exams, your NBME exams for each rotation, the shelf exams. Try to make sure you do really well in each of them. And then by the time you end up taking your step two exam, for example, you'll be really prepared since you worked really hard during each of those clinical blocks. You can also try and review a little bit each rotation or each block if you're studying for step one. Although this is a little bit harder, if you can manage a little bit of review throughout the year, it'll really help you when it comes time for the exam and you can actually get by with a shorter uh, dedicated study time. So now a few tips in regards to the actual exam day. Make sure you manage your time well. Often you'll have like an hour for like 40-ish questions. And what I like to do is split each of the hour marks into quarter sections. So every 15 minutes or so, I'll see how my progress is and try to make sure that I'm doing like 10 questions for 15 minutes or that I'm on track for whatever time allotment I have for that section. I feel like this is a great way to not have a rush at the end, which I often have to do since I'm a really slow test taker. For test day, make sure you come early, make sure you have your confirmation uh, number, your photo ID, snacks, um, and make sure that you figure out how you'll split your test blocks before you get in. Most people need a little bit more of a break later on in the day when they get more fatigued. I ended up taking around 10 to 15 minutes in between every two question blocks, but later on in the day I ended up taking a little bit more and earlier on in the day I took a little bit less. So the last tip is to just kind of embrace the stress and kind of the unfortunate period that is dedicated and try to keep a positive mindset if you can. Some people enjoy dedicated studying oddly enough, but for most people it's going to be a tough time and probably not the best time of your life. A lot of people end up getting really stressed out, maybe even a little bit depressed, and seek help if you really need to. But if you can, try and find ways to manage your stress, try and find ways to stay calm and in a good mental state. Realize that your step score isn't going to be determinant of how good of a doctor you are. And also realize that everyone goes through this period of high stress, having to deal with maybe not the most enjoyable time of their life, but there's light at the end of the tunnel, you're gonna make it out, and eventually this will all be past you, and you'll be doing the thing you actually like, which is treating patients and helping others through medicine. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you can for me, please. That'd be helpful and help me out a lot. One of you guys asked me this question or asked me for this video on Instagram DM, so feel free to message me if you want me to make a video on whatever topic you'd like. If you have any questions, comments, or video suggestions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. Feel free to write them down below in the comment section or just let me know whatever else in person if you can find me. But uh, I'll be happy to make a new video. I got a bunch of probably more interesting videos coming through, but I hope this helped. So thank you guys again so much for watching and take care.